I do love me some shooters. Oh, wait. There, that's what I'm talking about. I believe the term used nowadays is forced scrolling shooter. I guess it makes sense to make that distinction. Now, I have to admit, when it comes specifically to the 8-bit era, I have a bit of a blind spot in this genre. I do vividly remember its birth in the arcades and getting very excited when I first saw Xevious. With those landscapes scrolling beneath you, it gave her a sense of travel that was beyond what was the stacked screens of Space Invaders or Galaga. Um, I also played a lot of Scramble, which I'm pretty sure was the very first side-scrolling shooter. Um, I play this most on the Vectrex, actually, though that machine is certainly long gone by now. Um, uh, this would have been some years later, but I remember I also put a lot of time into a game called Twin Cobra. It was in the back corner of a convenience store near our school, and I thought it was really cool. Um, by the time I got my NES, though, I'd lost touch with what was going on in the arcades, uh, especially since arcades themselves largely went away. Uh, I got my NES in 88, and one of the first three games I got, which I, I got secondhand, uh, was with a Capcom shooter called Section Z, or Section Z if you're Canadian. Uh, you know, and, and I thought it was pretty alright. And I uh, also ended up getting a Hal's Air Fortress, which again, I thought was pretty alright. Um, neither of those titles really blew me away, so I didn't seek out many other shooters. It wasn't until fairly recently that I got some of the more impressive 8 bit titles like uh, Dragon Spirit. Uh, which I actually got for free with my FC Mobile back when that was still a thing, and uh, Life Force, which I actually remember being told about, but I don't think I even understood what that game was at the time as a shooter. Everything was kind of a platformer back then, it seemed like. No, I really didn't get back on board the shooter train until like the 16-bit era. When I got the Turbo Graphics in the spring of 91, one of the my first games was R-Type, which is just fantastic. It was... I was so even more impressed by it when I when I actually found an R-Type machine in the arcades and saw just how closely the Turbo version looked and played like it. Um, I mean, the Turbo was a great platform for shooters in general, really. Uh, and when I got my Genesis that same summer, uh, one of the early games I got was Thunder Force 2, which had those great free roaming top-down sections. Really very cool. Um, my favorite was definitely Raid and Trad, which is still one of my single favorite Genesis games of all time. When I started buying up Genesis games again. It was the first one I got to get back in my collection, as you know, rough as it may look here at the label. But, uh, um, but then the fall, that same year, 91, you know, was the launch of the SNES. And within the first two or three months, we saw like four really heavy hitters. You know, there was Capcom's UN Squadron, which just looked fantastic. And um, Darius Twin, which, you know, uh, may not have been as, as good as Sagaya on Genesis, but was still quite good. Um, Super R-Type, on the other hand, was just unquestionably excellent in my mind, even if it was very tough. Um, and then, of course, Gradius 3, which was the very first Gradius title I ever played and owned. Um, it was just great depth and variety. Um, and it certainly wasn't as hard as R-Type, especially if you abuse the extra lives code. Uh, I spent a lot of time with this game, for sure. Um, so given all that, I found it hard to get excited about going back to the 8-bit shooters. Uh, I honestly had never even played the original Gradius until it was made available on the 3DS Virtual Console. Uh, it turned out to be a more than pleasant surprise. Um, oh, while we're speaking of the 3DS Virtual Console, you owe it to yourself to check out Rekka Summer Carnival 92. It's a really impressive shooter and, and sells for much cheaper than what you would get the Famicom cartridge for, for sure. Um, anyway, so when I did start looking to acquiring some Famicom cartridges to make use of this new 60-pin adapter that Hyperkin is selling. Uh, Gradius was one of the very first I got. Um, I mean, just looking at the label art, you can certainly see why. It's just a gorgeous painting that makes a pretty strong argument for owning physical media. Um, rather unusual for the time, it was also the art for the U.S. release as well. It was pretty typical for publishers in North America to dismiss the original Japanese art for new, often inferior artwork, but in this case, Konami made the right decision to leave it as is. It kind of has the same quality as those uh, classic painted Atari Twix 100 box arts, you know what I mean? Um, anyway, enough looking at the cartridge, let's actually play the game itself, starting right now. All right, here we go. The title screen. Is that out the title screen? <laughs> Beautiful. I hope the sound is coming through okay. Got the missiles. I think I got the two speed ones, right? OK. 
Okay, got the double. It's another one of those games that's hard enough to talk and play at the same time, but I'm going to do my best. And um, go for the first option. So, yeah, like I was saying, I could play Gradius 3 first, and this level is in Gradius 3. It's like the through level, I think. I mean, it's in there. And there's so many other little details that are in this that are like the tilting, like when your ship goes up and down, it tilts. What a great little detail to have. I mean, it's just, there's so much attention to detail in the graphics in this game. Yeah, it gets extra points, go through this mountain. Got my option. I can relax a little bit now. I have to get one more before I get to the boss. So like I was saying, I guess, I don't remember it being this way, but I guess at the time this game took a little, uh, Greatest 3 took a bit of a hit for being so much like the first game. But coming to it backwards, I'm just super impressed how much of Gradius 3 is in this, like how much they managed to pull off. This is still an early Famicom game, really, when you think about it. 1986, it's only a few years on. You know, we're only a few years... We're probably just getting to the first sets of mapper chips, the extra chips for the um, cartridges, so... You look at what's going on right here. This is a pretty impressive feat. Like, I don't see a lot of sprite flicker, and i really got to concentrate on pushing the button. This is a pretty safe spot, but... Uh, This is why I want to get completely powered up before I, uh, there we go, get the boss fight. I can get the shield on the next level. I'm not worried about shields until the next one. Okay, so these guys, this is, again, this this guy was in Gradius 3 too, except he had a lot more buddies with him. One of the one of the NES limitations are is you do get used to seeing this particular guy at the end of every stage, pretty much. Okay, I'm getting almost got him. He, he actually will die on his own anyway after a certain amount of time. I guess even he gets tired of just going up and down. They really got these boss fights figured out in the later games, that's for sure. And I'm really hoping the, the sound and the music comes through all right. I had an earlier recording of this that I thought worked out well, and then I listened back and there was no sound from the game at all. And this is a game that excels with the audio as well as visuals, really. Actually, in every level, like, like, it's such a really well put together game. It's amazing that I sort of missed out on it the first time. There we go, got the shield. And look at all these little destructible bits. Like, again, this is another level that was in Gradius 3. And, you know, this NES manages to pull it off extremely well, extremely well. Okay, so I want to get enough power-ups to be able to replenish my shields once they go down. I'm trying to concentrate. So my primary goal is to at least get to level 3. Then we'll just see how it goes, but... I'm not expecting miracles from this run. So far, I've done me able to do all this without cheating so far. You know what I mean. Oh, got hit there. All right, so we're coming up on my least favorite boss fight in Gradius history. Although it is actually much, much worse in Gradius Rebirth. If you've ever played Gradius Rebirth on WiiWare, I think you'll know which stage is coming up. That totally sucks. This one is only slightly less sucky because it's a little shorter, but it's the same kind of boss fight. It's not really a boss fight at all, really. It's just a series of annoyance. You kind of got to lead the spawns. Like, I don't know. That, there's no good strategy for this. Just keep moving. Try not to run into guys. At least I got my shields. So that's the main thing. Without shields, this is just a huge pain in the ass in every respect. Excuse my language again. All right, there we go. See? Way easier than Gradius Rebirth, at least. And I guess we're going to run into our buddy again. I guess the Bacterians got their mechanical bosses. Oh, jeez, Louise! I can't believe I did that. All right, okay, you know what's coming up, right? Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. All right, so at least I got to show that off, right? Silver lining. Now I'm probably going to try and get the... Um... No, I'll go for the double. 
Yeah, I'll go for the double. I'm debating about getting the lasers, but I still want the doubles for the next stage coming up after this. Let's try and not make the same mistake twice. Although we have to go through this dumb boss fight again, which is probably really bad YouTubing. <laughs> it's probably just... Maybe by the miracle of editing, I'll cut this part out, but I think it feels a little bit like cheating if I did that. So maybe we'll just... It's not that long. We'll just get through this and get past the boss and get to where I really wanted to go to. I actually got to be careful because I can't replenish my shields. So... Right, this should be okay. So for the next fight, the next boss fight, I'm just going to try and play it safe. Like I said, he'll die on his own anyway, so just avoid the lasers and we'll get to where we're going to. And I almost got a free guy too anyway. You get a free guy 100,000, so... Let's just not die here. Now with the Konami code, I think it only works once per level, so if I die again... Um, after I get past him, I should be able to do the code again, but if I die again at this boss, then I won't be able to, and I'm pretty much boned. It doesn't matter how many men I got, if I can't level up again, it's just, there's no point. There we go, I think I even got him too, didn't I? Because I got, you know, okay, no, I, okay. So if you've ever played any Gradius before, you know what it is, then you probably know what stage is coming up. I think every Gradius game has them. Let's try and get these guys so I can get the shield replenished. Try and be careful. I know I'm taking some hits here a little bit, I think. Uh, I really hate these guys. Oh, jeez. Okay, I need two power-ups. Here we are. Easter Island heads and the Moai heads. Every Gradius game has them. I don't even know if they have a... Oh, I gotta remember not to pick up those power-ups now. I'm just going to try and get this used as best I can. Now there's, um, I was doing a practice run on this uh, the other day, and I guess I must have found like a warp or something, because after I finished, <clears throat> excuse me, these stages, I went to a stage where like there were these spinning hollow blue Easter Island heads that come at me that I had to avoid because you can't kill them. And then I sort of skipped ahead a level to where I would be, so it, it's like a level skip. And I guess that, that's in Gradius 3 too, although it works a little bit differently, I guess. I don't remember, I don't even know how I did the warp on here, so I'm probably not going to see it. But it was a really weird discovery. I should probably just looked it up so I could replicate it for this video, but it's not exactly a uh, expert play anyway. In fact, I'm really taking a lot of hits here, and I don't have a way to replenish my shields. So I'm really just keeping my fingers crossed right now. Okay, this looks good. This looks okay. But these guys coming up, oh, I hate these guys coming up so bad. Oh, I got hit. Okay, well. See, and they backtrack, so I knew that was going to happen. I could tell it was going to happen even before it happened. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, be a start. Oh, wait, well, no. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, be a start. It's not letting me do it. This could be it. I think I'm going to crash and burn here. This is not going to go well for me. Yeah, you know what? I made it to where I wanted to go. I wanted to show off at least level 3, get to the Easter Island heads. That's the complete greatest experience right there. So um, I'm probably going to bounce out of this right now. Just, I'm just going to embarrass myself probably a little bit further, but I guess I can't really resist playing a little bit more here. If I can make it through this, it would be a minor miracle, but uh, I don't think I could, no, okay, that's it. All right, well, you know what? I showed off the game pretty well. I think you see what I mean. For an NES game and an early NES game, relatively early, it's fantastic. Holy cow, amazing. I, I, I'm certainly sorry I missed it the first time around, but, um, you yeah, know, let's bounce out of this and uh, we'll say goodbye to you all. All right, that was Gradius. Thanks for watching. That was cool. And uh, listen, you know, if you have a Nintendo Switch and that online service thing, you can Play it right now. Go on there, man. You don't need to watch me play it. Play it yourself. <laughs> I'll see you until next time. Take care.